and it seems like the match has already started again without us seeing, seeing the bans. And as you can see here, Kufra, Selena, Ling, and Natalia being banned for this game. While we have a first pick fighting Kimmy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as you can see, the draft is actually unusual again because there is a link being the band then there is a key on the first pick because there were a lot of options available rather than picking her first so i'm not sure why team b Larai went for a key pick but let's find out in the game yeah maybe you're gonna be surprised finally seeing the kimmy pick here you're gonna be seeing the best Kimmy out there. <laughs> now nah, I'm just kidding. I mean, because you know, I you know that I do play the Kimmy, and I do believe that right now she is one, if not one of the better marksmen that is that is funnel funnelable with a hyper carry strategy. So I'm kind of excited how the side here of Pir Lahoy Roy is gonna be playing this Kimmy. Let's just call them BLR for now. That would be better for us. What do you think? Yeah, I'm just gonna be calling them BLR because that is yeah. their short name after all here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as you can see, then uh, Crop, is Gaia, and Export being the best coming up from uh, Mizo Prophet. So, a good early game coming up from their side with the heavy charge by the Croc. Then there is the picking. two damage spam for the Export. Then Kaya is there, also a heavy burst in the early game. So, if I'm not mistaken, they might be thinking of ending this game soon. But on the other hand, you have a King, which is a very OP player, hero in the game. Yes, indeed, because you know, Kimi is one of those champions nowadays that kind of hurts when it comes to that late late game stages of the game but at the same time if she's not gonna get the front lines that she needs which is normally like the grog the kufra she's not gonna be surviving as easy as the other marksmen to be honest yeah and definitely my bro as you can see here the last picks coming up from blr are going to be uranus and hilo so a very 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 tanky composition coming up from their side with these two tanks which are actually not having a lot of cc so i'm not sure how they're going to pull up this draft without not amount not a huge amount of crowd control hmm? yeah that's very true my bro but you know rounding up your composition they're gonna be having the cushion on their side so just basing and looking in the overall composition BLR or Nisa Profits? Who do you think has a better advantage here? Yeah, definitely it's going to be BLR for me. Because their early game is just too much with the Uranus being there. I'm not sure they're going to play Uranus as a tank. I guess they're going to play this tank here. It would have been a good in terms of fighter choice. But yeah, let's see. Yeah, we are going to be seeing very soon once we do get in the land of ISC. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so let's, like, you mm -hmm. know, for me personally, because I do play the Kimmy composition, I do like her, but at the same time, there is a Kaya there together with a Kushin. Not combo wombo, it's just super strong. It can even burst down the Esmeralda coming from the side here of BLR. So, I agree with you in many ways. I do feel like the side here of Mizo Profits can can probably clinch this out Welcome with a victory. Yeah, definitely, because uh, they don't have a lot of CC to, stay, to stop this cushion to save their heroes from this Kaya. Actually, there's just one CC, if you ask me. Our direct CC, which is Hylos. And it will be hard for him to save Kimi and Esmambo in the gangs from the cushion. Yeah, but at the same time, as we can see here, there's going to be a four-man middle lane rotation coming from BLR here. Probably Jyde looking forward to kill the cushion. Unfortunately, not doing so. Maybe a little bit scared. I feel like that was a perfect opportunity to kill, to kill the cushion there because, you know, cushion is one of those heroes that really really needs to get that level 4 before dealing massive amount of damage so i am surprised there wasn't really an engage coming from their side oh but yeah, it seems like they're looking for it this time uranus 
has so much sustain. Kimmy is now pew pewing her way to victory. Flicker is now being used one by one. Everyone is falling down, but no one is gonna die, unfortunately. And wow. That was, how can I say, a serious turn of events right there. First, Hylos was dying, then he was saved. Then, he, Mizo Prophets were backing off, but then actually they got carried away but then they were dominating but then they had to come back yeah <laughs> so it was i feel a like roller coaster of gangs <laughs> that's so true but at the same time i feel like goth ninja with the jawhead there should have not played that save probably hesitated so much and now you know he has to almost pay the price with his life because in, in in that team fight he did have the flicker up so many times he could have flickered Flicker engage on the jawhead, even the croc, they would have died anyway because Uranus was there. So maybe that moment of hesitation is gonna be the reason why they are behind in this game already. Yeah, definitely. As you can see, Team Mizu Prophets, they're actually kind of dominating this game. In every gang, they are leaving their enemies on 10 to 20% HP. And in one of the future gangs, if they succeed, then they can actually win the game because they have a carry which is a very good lead hero in terms of late game yes indeed but as you can see here kimi just pew pewing the turrets looking to get the bottom lane but at the same time she is alone she is gonna be caught out by discussion incandescence going in oh my god gushin unable to assassinate this kimi roughly what are you doing Mm -hmm. So it seems like we're gonna be having a quick little pause here, unfortunately. And you know, this is once again ISC Day 2 brought to you by Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Yeah, definitely. And as you can see, Prince, what's going on here? It's definitely and and how what do you say? The Mizo Prophets have an upper hand. As you can see, they they are having a goal cool lead of one thousand. They are choking their enemies. Their gangs are going perfect. They have a late game hero carry. So team uh, BLR, they need to think of something. They need to come up with something in order to switch this game because if this continues, then carry is definitely going to hurt them real bad. I agree with you here because you know. The, the cushion unable to assassinate jaw playing a little too safe nowadays so maybe there's a lot of adjustments that they need to do but it seems like we are finally back here in the game my dude mm -hmm. and as we can see it's going neutral at the moment three minutes have been passed and so far no kills there, there were gangs a lot of them but none of the gangs actually prove enough anything at all they just happened and they just ended. That yeah, the guys are not being fatal at this moment. But at the same time, the damage is being done already when it comes to the farming. Because now, 1k behind is the situation that BLR is facing here. Grok with the wild charge. Hylos might be in trouble here. But the glorious pathway is going to be saving him completely. Was Kimi trying to take the turtle? I'm not sure, but this Uranus is definitely going to push the lane. Oh, first blood for discussion start. here! Wow! Maybe another one because he's able to mark the Kimi in the back line. But it seems like the side here of uh, Mizu Profits are just going to be playing it safe and secure the turtle instead. Wow. Ashmer will actually dive too deep and she will die for sure. Yeah, that's a big, big mistake being done by the Esmeralda. There wasn't really any reason for her to re-engage on the low hero, low health heroes such as the Kaya anyway. So that is uh, kind of a, something that shouldn't have happened, especially that this is the Indian Summer Challenge where we do want to see the best teams in the Indian region. But at the same time, maybe this is the nerves that she's facing because no one is bad here. There are all the best teams in Indian, right? But as you can see, actually Team BLR are having a turret advantage. But now this x is going to take the turret in the top lane. So it will equalize them. 
And as you can see, I haven't seen a good engage coming up from this Jawhead and Kimi, and she will get a kill, but what under what circumstances Jawhead is already dead. And it's a one to one trade. Now everyone who's back will back off, I guess. Yeah, I feel like for me, the main problem coming from the side here of BLR is the Jawhead maybe is playing way too safe. I feel like like you miss a lot of engages that a team like let's say Demon Slayer, Starwing's game would have already gotten. So maybe They mm -hmm. just need to amp that aggression so that no matter what kind of mistakes or out of positioning that the side here of Mr. Prophet is going to be doing, they're going to be able to capitalize on it. But at the same time, the wild charge of Grok able to kill out the high loss. Yeah, definitely. And as you can see, this game is. Uh, slowly going into the side of Mizo Profits here, but a big engage coming up. Finally, Jawhead using the second skill. Oh, the flicker is a Fukacha and he survives the gank. And it was a 0 to 0 trade off, but on the other hand, Carrie in the top lane trying to take the turret. If she, is she's going to succeed in it, nah, she has to back off. Yeah, she has to back off. Probably looking to get this turtle here. They're gonna give this to the Gushin so he can dive more with, with his daggers. But actually, they're gonna be giving it to Carrie, which is the best option for me because Kushin would have benefited <laughs> yeah. much more or with those shields but uh oh yeah. here it is being shanked out way way too much shabby with a grok going going to enter early sulfur is in last insanity is used Wild Charge is now here and Gushin killing every single one of the team of BLR here. Triple kill now here with a carry and wow, that is how you play mobile. Legends boys and yeah, girls. that was a very perfect engage. <laughs> yeah, and girls don't make controversial statements. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a perfect engage from this ex Borg and the Grog. Even though Grog died, but it wasn't like it gave his team four kills and three kills to carry herself. And as you as you've seen, just after that gank, Carrie was able to get her endless battle because she's a bounty hunter. Now the cool difference on her is huge. So it is actually 90% into the hand of team Mizo Profits to execute this game very well with the carry having the highest farm. So let's see how they are going to end it. Yeah, I'm actually kind of sad here for the side of the Kimi. She's unable to capitalize on this hyper carry strategy that her team was planning. I mean, she does. She is kind of worthy first pick because she hasn't died yet, but they aren't able to, to do the master plan that they were thinking of, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Kimi has been cut out! Kai Divan Judgment! Wow! Yeah. I was about to like, I was about to say that Kimi can't survive for long with the Kaja and Grok up, and yeah, she's dead in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's not only a Kimi, a, a Grok and a Kaja anyway. There is still also a Gershin that's gonna be assassinating her. Yeah. And this could be the first inhibitor of the game, and there goes the sword. He will get the kill, but never mind. He's on a sub. Ah, that was close. Could have got the kill there. That is indeed. But as you can see here, the top lane Jawhead not not able to participate to the team fight. So instead, he's just gonna go push some lanes. But you know, I feel like he recalled way too early. I feel like he should have gotten the yeah. third first before going back because that the team of Mr. Profits was really in the bottom lane. That would at least took them around 12 seconds before rotating there in the top lane. So he did have an ample amount of time to deal damage into that second tier turret there in the top lane. Yeah, definitely my bro. As we can see, the cube is quite going into, like, it's, you can't call it a complete one-sided match because it's taking them time, but yeah, they are performing very well. 
I mean, the art taking time your time. Pass, mm -hmm, go on. Yeah, as time will pass, this will turn into a one-sided match. Carrie will start harassing them. Wushin will start diving so deep. So they must do something right now because at this stage of the game, it's really hard to do something, if you ask me. <laughs> Look at the engage coming up from Xbox, Carry getting a kill in Jawhead, and now this time Smilda wants to dive in, but was it really necessary because Carry? Look at the position. Oh, that was a cool. That was a good positioning coming up from Carry, diving inside deep and getting the kill. Wow, cheap and cheap triple kill now here. here. Yeah. Oh my God, a maniac, my bro. And I feel like this is the perfect time to end this game with a bang. Oh, she's give is giving it seven seven. Oh my god, they should go for a savage. What are they doing? Nah, nah she they just want to, just to secure the skill here. And that is yeah. GG for the side here of Mizo Profits. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, I mean, what do you think yeah. went wrong here for the side of BLR? Mm, actually, the only game as you were expecting. Thing. It was a bad gameplay coming up from the side of Jawhead here. He was always late in the gangs. He was playing to save. He could have got a couple of kills in the first gang itself. But he was like, nah, I can't dive deep. And if you're picking early games heroes and you're not going to fight early game, then what's the use of picking them? Right? That's so true. Now that you mention it that way, there's really no use if you're going to pick the early game heroes anyway, if you're not going to be able to capitalize on them. So maybe there is some gameplay issues that BLR needs to address. But yeah, once again, this 